Mr. Kenuvia Wamwangi, Chairman of the Transition Authority, thank you and welcome for coming. Thank you, John. Mr. Wamwangi, you are responsible for overseeing the process that will lead us to county governments. You have a certain amount of money to do so, and last we read about you in the press, A, you'd expected too little money, and even that that you accepted wasn't enough. Would you like to comment? Yes, I would like to comment. I do not want to cry about uh, that uh, constraint, but it's a serious one, because I had requested the government to grant us 1.4 billion shillings to be able to carry out the process, and we only granted 600 million as a, a, a transition budget. And uh, what I would like to say here in brief is that it is not enough, but uh, we are trying other ways, like dealing with the uh, uh, development partners to see whether we can zip the gaps. Thank you. I'll take that for an answer. Let's go back to what you're meant to be doing with or without any money. Yes. The idea is that in the lead up to the elections, you would have already set in place the country would be ready for the transfer yes. to devolved county governments, little pockets of the country being responsible for their own economies. Mm -hmm. Have you been successful? Yes, we have been very successful. There are about four or five things that must be done for that process to be achieved. One, there are certain legislations to be passed particularly the money bills that you may have read or seen uh, struggles in parliament. And this uh, went through before parliament uh, uh, went, uh, was dissolved. So we are happy that that process is over. Then the second and the most important thing is the transfer of functions. We have just finished our last bit of consultations in Naivasha with over 400 local government officers we have consulted with the rest of government, the ministries of law of government, and now, John, we are just about to gazette the functions that will go out to governors on 5th of March. I understand that, but that's the process on paper. It's all looking wonderful. But also something that wasn't quite meant to go uh, the way it was meant to go, Mr. Wamwangi, was this whole business of the, this last parliament, this last government putting into place uh, commissioners against the edicts of the constitution. So when the governors take up their jobs, they will find that the only, the people that they're dealing with have already been selected by the government that went before. So in, 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 they're limited, and I don't see a wonderful, friendly act of, of participation and liaison and co cooperation because they will be dealing with county commissioners that are being imposed upon them no, by the last government. No, John. I want to make it very clear that the Transition Authority is the only authority with the responsibility of processing the devolved system of government. We are the people who are going to midwife that whole process. The county commissioners and the system of government, known as the provincial commission, provincial administration, are part of that process. So what have we done? We have separated the functions of the county commissioners from the functions of the governors. So there are two acts in place. The first act is County Governments Act which govern the county governments and there is coordination of government uh, business uh, which uh, determines what the county commissioners will do. I understand that entirely. You're saying they're two separate groups. Yes. You have defined what, what each group should do separately. I go back to the very small print yes. of collaboration and cooperation between yes. them. How are you going to guarantee that? In the Coordination Act, the county commissioner is a liaison officer between the government and the governor. The county commissioner only is, is only concerned with the business of government, national government, that's being undertaken at the county level. So 
he is a chairman of uh, over all other uh, national government officers operating at the county level. But when it is required that the, he consults with the governor, then he's the right officer. So you're saying in very simplistic terms that they're two separate, uh, they don't have to meet each other for lunch ever over a five-year period. See, they should be encouraged to meet for breakfast, for lunch, and for everything because both of them are performing very important duties to the citizen. Both of them are delivering services. One is delivering so services. So it's in their interest to make common it cause. in their very great interest to meet and uh, lies and agree uh, on many things just as neighbors, but not one over the other. Right. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wangi, it seems very interesting that you, in terms of tenses, you, you use the sort of near future, we yes. are going to. Yes. When, when, it, when it seems to me that you said we should have, because the timelines stipulate that all the things that you're meant to have done are meant to be before March the 4th. That's what I've said. Right. The acts, the registration is in place. Everything is ready. The, the, the registration is place okay, that, so, that so, governs okay, the, the okay, governors. I, okay, uh, everything is in place as you, as you see it. So, for example, if I were to say to you, this mm -hmm. is a, this is, but do remember that those of us who, who, who go about our daily business yeah. have no uh, understanding of the, the machinations, the internal day-to-day -day delivery of government. I'm just asking you if one of your duties is to audit assets and liabilities, which means to say, to say the property that each and every county has. There was a great debate about rivers flowing that we last heard. A river goes through here and it's going to come and the water is going to go to Nairobi, but the river started in Mount Kenya region and we want to benefit. And it seemed to me that people were set to be a daggers drawn over ownership. Have you told them what to do? Uh, first, it's like uh, kids playing. Uh, they don't play with this uh, toy now. Uh, yes. Let's let's look at it that point. Yeah. Have you audited assets and liabilities in a fashion that everybody knows what belongs to whom? So what I would like to say, this is uh, mid January. Use the word everything is place. I didn't. Because it is a process. So some processes are in the middle, some are completed. And uh, I talked about the legislation, for instance, and now functional analysis. We are working on the criteria for auditing the assets. We have, uh, for instance, also issued a moratorium. And a moratorium here means banning the transfer of assets during the transition period. That what we have done. Well, I'm, the I'm about to. Yes. The transfer of a river, you're going to make sure no, no. we don't detour the way it's flowing. No, no, no. Let, me, let me now answer you to your earlier question. I, I think, yes, the yeah. one that the, 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 the people are spe speculating, mm. which of these things belong to our county? And what of those counties which, in, in, in essence, yes. um, uh, have sand as an asset uh, before you go deep down and find oil? I'm, I'm trying to ask you, Wanda Wangi, yes. to break it down to understandable tenets. Yes, if you give me a chance, I will. And I that shall. is, yes. and that is some assets are national uh, assets. National assets in the sense that they belong to the people of Kenya. A river may belong to the people of Kenya because tra it traverses across counties. And therefore, no one person may be able to claim it. Other things like steam, like uh, geothermal and things like that, they belong to the people of Kenya because they come from the ground. So for us, our it responsibility- comes from our ground. Uh, yes, oil our we, from, we, out, but our, our, the, the, we, the, the Trukana, the Samburu, our, we, the, who have been marginalized uh, in all these years, everybody said that, they've been that, marginalized, okay. aren't, you give, aren't you going to give them their moment in the sun and say, uh, let this oil uh, uh, take you uh, 40 years that you've missed out in the no, development no, 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 process? Because no. it's, it's in your neck of the woods. A national resource belongs to the people of Kenya because one country will have one resource, another one will have another. Therefore, they must share. Our responsibility, by the way, is to map out and create for the first time a national asset register, which does not exist anywhere. And within that, we are going to map out what is, is this is. going to be peculiar to Kenya? Are there any other countries in the world that have a national asset? You're, you're sort of saying we should have done this 100 years ago. Yes. I haven't. Uh, the, Uganda has a national asset register, or we're ahead of the game. I'm told we, are, we shall be the first if we come out with a national assets register. We shall be the first. And we are going to have national assets register and county assets registers. Right. So there will be many registers. 
But all we are saying in that mapping, we shall indicate what belongs to the people of Kenya and what belongs to the people of every county. Mr. Wang, again, let, let's go back to the layman's perception with this idea of assets. When we hear of clashes, say, in the Tana River Delta, the person, I won't say in what locality they might be, they might be in their living rooms, they might be in a bar, are saying people are getting ready against this idea of pastoralists. I was grazing my cow and went across and this was meant to be mine. Now it seems that it's in that county. And in order for this never to happen, I'm going to be killing two-year-old babies so that the people who are in that neck of the woods disappear before these boundaries are drawn. People are dying. Yes. And you're saying we're having meetings and we've got it all ready and implemented? You see, we can't stop those people from dying because we are not the only stakeholders in this matter. The whole of Kenya, all Kenyans have got a responsibility. We must assume a new culture of good neighborliness, of understanding each other, of trying to overcome ethnicity, of trying to overcome uh, selflessness, of, of, of uh, imbibing selflessness, and overcoming selfishness. So all I'm saying, the Kenyans have to build a new culture of loving one another and uh, uh, wanting to coexist in love. And this is a responsibility of all Kenyans. It's not a responsibility of transition authority. It's also a responsibility of the entire government machinery. So uh, we cannot say that only guns or only police will solve this problem. Leaders have got a major responsibility because it is the responsibility of all. We are doing our best to promote peace and to preach peace. If Kenyans imbibe that, then that's what they'll be. We, we have known Kenya, I'm not a young man. I have known Kenya, which has been very peaceful. And I'm wondering why now people have turned one against the other. It's something I can't quite countenance. And yet I have lived in this country for over 60 years. And some things I'm seeing now, I cannot explain. So probably they are human and they are man-made. And therefore the same man-made uh, uh, approaches can also bring back the peace we knew in this country.